This is a packet capture of a host pinging another IP in the network. It looks harmless, but if you look closely, there is something embedded inside the packet. In this video, I will show you how attackers can hide malicious data inside an ICMP packet. This is a tool that uses ICMP for establishing reverse shell from a target. This is a technique that bypasses firewall restrictions since ICMP traffic is typically permitted. Let's have a quick demo and after that we will analyze how it works under the hood. First step is to clone the repo. Then we need to install Scapy, which is a Python module that performs packet manipulation. If you've seen my old videos, I use this module a lot in performing low-level network tasks such as doing man-in-the-middle attack and decrypting HTTPS traffic. Inside the repo, there are two files the command and control script, which is to be run inside the attacker machine. Then the second one is the implant that will be run on the target machine. To run the command and control script, we need to pass the interface where we will listen and the target IP of our victim. At this point, it is now sending an ICMP request to the target and waiting for the reply. This is different from normal reverse shell where it passively listens for the connection. With ICMP reverse shell, it actively sends the probes and waits for the victim to reply. Inside the victim, we will run the implant script. We will also pass the interface that will be used for the connection. Then the IP of the attacker machine. After that, it now starts to listen for the ICMP request from the attacker. But since we already started sending attacker probes, the only thing remaining is for the victim to reply to those requests. So back to the attacker shell, we can now type our commands and get the output. In order to understand how is it possible to perform covert operations inside an ICMP traffic, we first need to have a high-level overview on the protocol itself. ICMP is one of the simplest protocol. The packet doesn't contain a lot of fields. This part is the ICMP header which tells what type of packet it is. It can be either type 8 for echo request or type 0 for echo reply. In order to determine where the packet will be sent, there is an IP header on top of it that shows the source and destination IP address. Take note that in this example, the type is set to 8, which is echo request. In order to create an echo reply packet, we change the type to 0 and switch the source and destination address. The bottom part of the packet is an optional data field which can be abused by attackers. Adversaries can add malicious code inside. In the case of ICMP reverse shell, this is where we will put the commands and the output. Let's have a look in detail how is it implemented in the scripts. We will start first with the command and control program. I'm going to use a NeoVM plugin called Twilight to just highlight the relevant parts. We see here that we have few imports. The most important is the Scapy module, which is used for low-level packet manipulation. We also have the ICMP ID and the time to live settings. We didn't discuss this in the previous section, but the ID is the one used to determine on which request a reply corresponds to and vice versa. These are like sequence numbers, but not entirely the same. Let's jump first at the bottom to see how the main function looks like. The idea of this script is to send commands that are embedded inside the ICMP packets. In order to be able to receive the reply, we need to sniff for the packets that will arrive on our specified interface. So, in this first two lines of the main function, it starts the sniffer in the background using multi-processing module. Then we have here a continuous loop that will be used as the interactive shell where the operator can type the commands. If you type exit, it will terminate the sniffer function, break from the loop, and exit the program. The actual payload is constructed like this. This is the ICMP packet structure we discussed from the previous section. At the last part, we see the optional data where the commands are embedded. On top of that is the ICMP header, which contains the type and packet ID. This is type 8, which means echo request. Then the topmost part is the IP header, which contains the destination IP addresses. After constructing our packet, we will send it using the send and receive function in Scapy. Let's look at the sniff function. It watched for packets on the interface we specified in the command line parameter. We have another parameter here, which is PRN. Once an ICMP packet arrived, it will be sent to shell function for further processing. Below that is the shell function. Since there are a huge amount of packet that will arrive in our IP, we need to filter it. We only care about the packets that came from our target. Then the packet must be of type zero, meaning echo reply. And it should have the optional data field, which will contain the output of the command we sent. Once the arriving packet matched those conditions, we will extract the data and print it to the terminal. Let's take a look at the implant code. The logic here is simpler. You just need to listen for the arriving echo request, extract the payload from the data field, and execute that as a shell command. First is we need to sniff the interface for arriving packets. Other than that, there is no other function needed to perform. That's why we don't need to use Python multiprocessing module. The packets arriving 
are passed through the ICMP shell for further processing. That function is very similar to the function from the command and control program with just few differences. We still need to filter the packets using several conditions. The packet must originate from the attacker. It must be of type 8 for echo request and it must contain a payload inside the data field. Once the packet satisfied those conditions, we will extract the data and execute it as a shell command. After that, we construct our return packet. We embed the output of the command inside the data field. The type will be zero, since this will now be an echo reply. And we send this back to the attacker using scapey send receive function. If we look in Wireshark, here is how it will look like. For a non-malicious ping request, the data field contains a recognizable pattern like this. But on our ICMP reverse shell, the data field contains varying sizes, which depends on the length of the command. In this example, it is only two bytes because the command we type contains two characters only. Then the echo reply from the target will be the output of the command. This technique of abusing the data field of an ICMP packet is used by attackers as a tunnel for their covert operations. So in certain situations, it is a must to block ICMP traffic on the firewall. I hope you learned something today. If you find my content valuable, please support me by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. See you on the next one.